Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Beckman here and today we're going to be going over Unit 5 Learning Target 8 Notes. So it's really important that you have your calculator out and that you're practicing this along with me. We're going to basically be combining what we did on the previous note sheet on both of those parts and we're going to be doing it all in one step on one problem today. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at steps to solving the quadratic formula. So the first thing you're going to do is identify your A, your B, and your C. So you want to figure out what goes with your uh, x squared term, what goes with your x term, and what's just a constant. And then the next thing you're going to do is you want to plug in your a, your b, and your c into your formula. Okay, so we're going to plug it in into the right places based on the formula. That's just like we did yesterday on the front side of your worksheet. Then you're going to simplify. So you're going to slowly go through and do each part at a time. So this is where students screw up the most because they try and type everything in their calculator at once. You cannot do that. All right, and then you want to round your answer to the nearest hundredths, which is two decimal points. Okay, so I want to have two decimal points afterwards, and you do need to be very careful about your rounding. So we'll make sure we talk about that as we go through our notes today. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this first one. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to jot the quadratic formula on top. So you should either have your note sheet out from yesterday or write this on your new note sheet because you do want to have the quadratic formula in front of you so you make sure you're using it correctly. So first thing we're going to do is assign our a, our b, and our c. Well our a is always with the square term so our a is 3. Our b is always with the x term so that's negative 7. And your c is what's just a number so that's negative 20. So now we're going to go ahead and plug that into the quadratic formula. So here you're going to do opposite of b. So since my b is a negative 7, I'm going to put a positive 7. Then plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now remember, whenever I plug things in, I like to put them in parentheses, especially if I'm squaring it. That's to make sure my calculator does it correctly. Minus 4 times 3 times a negative 20. So that's times my 4 times my a times my c. So all I did was plug in what I know. Divided by 2 times my a value. So now we're going to start simplifying this and we're going to do it one step at a time. So I'm going to keep that outside the same. I'm going to keep it as 7 plus or minus. So I'm going to do it one piece at a time. So negative 7 when I put in parentheses and square it Negative 7 squared is always positive, so that's why it's good to put it in parentheses. Negative 7 squared is a positive 49. If you ever square a negative number and you get a negative answer, you did it wrong. Then we're going to do times, in my calculator I want to do a negative 4 times 3 times a negative 20. And when I do negative 4 times 3 times a negative 20, I get a positive 240. So then I'm going to write plus 240 since that's positive. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to do 2 times 3 on the bottom, which is 6. So the next step I'm going to do is going to be to add those two together. So I get 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 plus 240, which is going to give me 289, divided by 6. Okay. So now I'm going to split it into two versions. So the version first I'm going to create is 7 plus the square root of 289 divided by 6 and 7 minus the square root of 289 divided by 6. Word of caution here, you cannot type it all into your calculator at once. So here's how I want you to type it in your calculator. I want you to do 7 plus the square root of 298. Hit equals and then divide by 6. So you need to completely simplify out the top, get your answer before you divide by 6. Dividing by 6 should be the last thing you do. So go ahead, pause this video, try that in your calculator. If you did it correctly, you should have gotten 4. So then let's do the other version. So in your calculator, 7 minus the square root of 289, hit enter, and then divide it by 6. So if you did that correctly, your calculator is going to show up with something like this. So we talked about needing to round to two decimal points. So to round to two decimal points, you're going to look at the third decimal point. So since that third decimal point is five or greater, you're going to take the second decimal point and round it up. So you're going to get negative 1.6, and then we need to take that uh, second six and bump it up to a seven. 
So negative 1.67 and 4 are both of your solutions for number 1. Now, let's take a look at number 2. Let's start by figuring out what our A, our B, and our C's are. So my A, since it's just an X squared, my A is 1. My B, since it's a 3X, is 3. And my C is negative 18. Remember, have that quadratic formula out in front of you. I'm not going to rewrite it on every single problem. So then I'm going to get that X is equal to opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared, so now I'm going to take 3 and put it in parentheses and square it, minus 4 times my A value, which is 1, times my C value, which is negative 18. Then I'm going to take and divide that by 2 times my A value, which is 1. So my first step is to simplify underneath the square root. So I'm going to do that piece by piece. So I'm going to keep my negative 3 on the outside, 3 squared is going to give me 9, and then I have negative 4 times 1 times negative 18. I'm going to type that on my calculator next. So negative 4 times 1 times negative 18 is going to give me 72. And all of that is going to be positive because when I multiply two negatives, it's going to be positive. So I put plus 72. And then 2 times 1 is 2. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the 9 and the 72 underneath the square root. So then I get negative 3 plus or minus the square root. 9 plus 72 is 81 divided by 2. So now I am ready to split this into two versions. So I'm going to do negative 3 plus the square root of 81. And then I'm going to type that in my calculator, hit enter, and then divide it by 2. So negative 3 plus the square root of 81, hit enter, and then divide it by 2. Calculate this along with me, and you should get a 3. Negative 3 minus the square root of 81, hit enter, see what that is, then divide it by 2, and you get a negative 6. So then your answers to this problem are 3 and negative 6. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at number 3. So when I look at number 3, I need to assign my a, my b, and my c value. So my a is always with the x squared term, so that's 4. My b is always with the x term, so that's 2. And my c is my constant, so that's going to be negative 17. So let's go ahead and let's put this into the quadratic formula. So I'm going to do opposite of my b, so since I have a positive 2, I'm going to do negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times my a, which is 4, times my c, which is a negative 17. All of that is over 2 times my a value. So then I'm going to simplify this out piece by piece. So I'm going to start by doing the 2 squared. So I'm going to keep the negative 2 plus or minus and the square root all the same. So 2 squared is 4. And then next, I'm going to do negative 4 times 4 times negative 17. And that comes out to be a positive 272. So then I'm going to write plus 272. Divided by 2 times 4, which is 8. So now we can go ahead and we can simplify what's underneath the square root. So I have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 272, which is going to give me 276, divided by 8. So now I need to split it into my two versions. So I'm going to do negative 2 plus the square root of 276. I need to type that all into my calculator. Hit enter or equals to see what that is, and then divide by 8. You always need to take the extra step to divide by 8 separately. So when you do that, you get 1.8266. So I need to round to the second number. So the third number I see is 5 or greater, which means I need to take this 2 and round it up. So my final answer will be 1.83. You will lose credit if you do not round correctly. Then we're going to have negative 2 minus the square root of 276. Type that all into your calculator. Hit Enter. And once you've hit an enter, then you'll divide by 8. It should be the very last thing you do. And your calculator is going to show you this. Okay? So we're going to look at the third number. Since that's 5 or greater, I need to bump up that second number. 
So that's going to be negative 2.33. So that's your final answer for number three. Now, let's take a look at number four. So for number four, let's decide our a and our b and our c. So since it's just an x squared, I have a is equal to one. My b is with the x, so that's negative five. And my c is a constant, so that's just going to be two. So let's go ahead and let's plug that in. So I get x is equal to opposite of b. So since I have a negative five, I'm going to put a positive five. Plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times my c value all over 2 times my a value. So now I'm going to simplify underneath the square root. So let's do that first. So I'm going to have my positive 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared. Remember that's always going to become positive and that's going to give me a positive 25. Then I'm going to do negative 4 times 1 times 2. That's actually going to give me a negative 8. Okay, so since it's negative, I'm going to write 25 minus 8 underneath the square root. And then we're dividing by 2. So let's go ahead and let's split this, in, or let's simplify that radical down a little more, and then we'll split it. So we're going to do 25 minus 8, which gives me 17, and that's all over 2. So now I need to split it into my two versions. So I get 5 plus the square root of 17. So I'm going to type that in my calculator. 5 plus the square root of 17. Hit equals or enter to see what that is. And then divide it by 2. So when I do that, I get this in my calculator. 4.5615. So I look at the third number. Since that's under 5, that means my 6 is going to stay the same when I round. So my answer here is 4.56. Now I need to do my minus version. So I need to do 5 minus the square root of 17. Hit enter and see what that's going to be in my calculator. And once I've gotten that, then I can divide it by 2. When I do that, I get 0.43844. So when I look, the third number is 5 or greater, which means I need to round the second number up. So that second answer then is going to be 0.4. Four. All right, so let's move on to the next one. And as you're going through these, you are going to get some really nasty decimals, and that's what's just going to happen. That's normal, okay? So let's get your A, your B, and your C. So here, your A is equal to 1, your B is equal to 6, and your C is equal to 9. So let's plug that into the quadratic formula. So you get opposite of B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times my a value, which is 1, times my c value, which is 9, all over 2 times my a value, which is 1. So let's go ahead and let's calculate this out. So we get negative 6 plus or minus the square root. Now let's do it piece by piece. So 6 squared is going to give me 36. And then negative 4 times 9 times 1 is a negative 36. So I'm going to write that as minus 36 divided by 2. So then what I get is negative 6 plus or minus the square root. 36 minus 36 is 0. So that's going to be 0 underneath the square root divided by 2. Well, square root of 0 is just 0. So the nice thing is, is this part actually just cancels off. So all we have left is negative 6 over 2. So for this problem, we're only going to have one answer. And that answer is going to be negative 3. So if you ever get the square root of 0, that means you're only going to have one answer instead of 2. So let's take a look at number 6 now. So my a is always with the square term. So my a is 1, my b is negative 2, and my c is negative 3. So let's go ahead and let's do this one. So I get x is equal to opposite of my b. So since I have a negative 2, I'm going to put in a positive 2 plus or minus the square root of my b squared, so I want to make sure that I put that negative 2 in parentheses, minus 4 times my a value, which is 1, times my c value, which is negative 3, all over 2 times my a value, which is 1. So then I'm going to do 2 plus or minus the square root. Now let's do it piece by piece. So negative 2 squared is a positive 4, 
And then we have negative 4 times 1 times negative 3, which is a positive 12. And that's going to be divisible by 2 times 1, which is 2. So let's go ahead and let's um, finish simplifying out this radical. So we have 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 12, which is 16, divided by 2. So now we're going to split it into two versions. So I have 2 plus the square root of 16. So I type that into my calculator first. 2 plus the square root of 16. Hit enter and then divide by 2. And when you do that, you should get 3. And then I'm going to do 2 minus the square root of 16. Type that into my calculator. 2 minus the square root of 16. Hit enter and divide that by 2. And when I do that, I get negative 1. So 3 and negative 1 are my answers for number 6. So let's take a look at number 7. So for number 7, my A is going to be 2, my B is going to be negative 7, and my C is negative 3. So then I get that X is equal to opposite of my B. So since I have a negative 7, I'm going to put in a positive 7, plus or minus the square root of my b squared, so I'm going to put that in parentheses again, minus 4 times my a, which is 2, times my c, which is negative 3. All of that over 2 times my a value, which is 2. So we're going to start by simplifying underneath the radical first. So I'm going to do negative 7 squared, which is going to become a positive 49, and then I'm going to do negative 4 times 2 times a negative 3, which is going to give me a positive 24. And all of that's going to be divisible by 2 times 2, which is 4. So then I have 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 plus 24, which is 73, divisible by 4. So now I want to split this into two versions. So I'm going to do 7 plus the square root of 73, and I'm going to type that into my calculator completely, hit enter, and then divide by 4. Remember, you only divide by 4 once you've gotten your answer. And when I type that in the calculator, I get 3.886. So since the third number is 5 or greater, I need to take that 8 and bump it up. And I'm only bumping up that second decimal. So that's going to become 3.89. And then I'm going to do 7 minus the square root of 73. Type that in the calculator, hit enter, and then divide it by 4. So when I do that, I get negative 0 0.3860. Since this third number is 5 or greater, I need to bump that 8 up. So I get negative 0.3, and then instead of writing the 8, I'm going to write the 9. So both of those are your answers for number 7. Last but not least, let's take a look at number 8. First of all, for number 8, I want you to change this to be plus 4. Or sorry, or to, or sorry it's, yeah, on your sheet it says plus 4, change it to be minus 4. That's just going to help this problem go a little bit better. So let's go ahead and let's calculate this out. So we have A is equal to 9, my B is equal to negative 7, and my C is equal to a negative 4. Remember that's a change from your paper because I wanted you to change that to a minus 4. And it also should have said that it's equal to 0 as well. So let's go ahead and let's calculate out the quadratic formula. So you get opposite of b, so since you have a negative 7, you're going to put a positive 7, plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared minus 4 times my a value, which is 9, times my c value, which is negative 4, all over 2 times my a value. So then I get 7 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared, which is a positive 49, and then here we have negative 4 times 9 times negative 4. So when I do negative 4 times 9 times negative 4, I get a positive 144. So I'm writing plus 144 underneath the square root. And then on the bottom I have 2 times 9, which is 18. So let's simplify that out. So then I have 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 plus 144, which is 193, divided by 18. So now I'm going to split it into two versions. So I have 7 plus the square root of 193. You're going to type that into your calculator, hit enter, and then divide by 18. And when you do that, you get 1.1606. So here, since the, the uh, sorry, 
we're doing two decimal points. So since the third number is zero, that six is going to stay the same. So one point, whoa, if I could write, that would be awesome. So then 1.16 is your answer for that first one. Then taking a look at the second one, 7 minus the square root of 193. Again, type that entire thing into your calculator, hit enter, and then divide it by 18. So when you do that, you get negative 0.3829. Since this third number is below 5, that's going to stay as negative 0.38. So that concludes your note video for today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for listening.